I'm here with rapper and punk musician Vic Mensa. Today we'll be talking about what is going on in this country in 2020 and how we can improve it. So let's go. You're pretty political with your music. Like, is it all your music is political or like? No, I wouldn't say all my music is political. Yeah. But I am political as a person. Yeah. So my music is going to be a reflection of that. You know, it's going to be a reflection of me. If you exist within a certain facet of society, your life ends up being inherently political. Existing like in any way is pretty, it's pretty much political because we just are in a, in a space that's, that's governed by that. So you grew up in Chicago. Yeah. What was it like for you growing up there? What was your experience? I grew up in the middle of two very different worlds mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. It's like I live five blocks from Obama's house. Oh shit. I live five blocks from a notorious project building and across the street from a Section 8 building. So people have been killed on the corner and millionaires live next door. Wow. You know what I mean? So it's like kind of just a dichotomy of experience. It's just the fact that I was so aware of the haves and have nots. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I'm on one side and we're comfortable. And across the street, niggas is selling drugs out the window. And I'm just peeping game and I'm like, you know, trying to figure out why things are the way they are. Why do you think things are the way they are? Why do we have so much disparity in this country? In order for that to happen, you have to have people that are at the bottom of the barrel. Because mm -hmm. the rich people got to stand on some. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, and it's also like America was built in this way, you know? Yeah. That you don't escape building a nation with slave labor on Indian bones. You can't just reach the 21st century and be like, oh, we're, we're over that now. <laughs> that was the past. We're not holding anyone down anymore. <laughs> you know what? We learned our lesson. That's not how shit works <laughs> at all. It's hard to imagine functioning in this society politically the way that it's set up or how it's set up in general, it changing from the inside, you know? Do you think that's possible or you think it needs to be from like mass uprise from the outside? If you watch history, it would appear that radical change happens when people demand it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of shit that hasn't changed. A lot of things have changed, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't mean to take away from the fucking, from the progress that's been made around this, this fine country of ours. <laughs> Looks it's a cool around. Place. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, this shit is pretty good. <laughs> Do you feel like there are enough people aware and paying attention to start creating that movement? I feel like there are, but also there's so much distraction. And we have access to more information than ever before. And that's powerful. But the potential for mass manipulation is also at an all time high. Exactly, and also just like mass consumerism. Oh, I need to look like this, yeah, I need like, to be like this. It's definitely not uh, an enlightened point of view. It's not a, an enlightened place. I think Donald Trump is hilarious, man. <laughs> I think he's the funniest president of all time. I mean. I swear to God, the nigga is so fucking funny. Uh, it's ridiculous, you know, and I can't help but be transfixed by it. I was already aware that America was misogynistic, racist, and xenophobic, though, mm -hmm. you know? Do you think that it pushes people to do more and to pay more attention? We'll see, right? 2020 yeah. is when we really see about that. Because, like, on some real shit, though, when I look at it, ain't shit really changed in my hood like that. Mm -hmm. When Obama was in office, it got more violent. Really? In Chicago, yeah, shit. It was going up. It's actually a little bit cooled out now, which I'm obviously not gonna attribute to like the presidency or anything. It's just 
kind of like the cycle of shit. Yeah. But, you know, from that perspective, like, things in the inner cities of America and in the city that Obama lives in did not improve. Yeah. You know, and didn't change when we were under progressive presidency and people thought we were in a post-racial America. I just mean to say that whoever's in that spot, the way that this machine works is still rigged to leave us high and dry. You were talking a little bit before about this country being built on Indian bones and slavery. You went to Standing Rock, right? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Standing Rock was amazing, man. Standing Rock was uh, just like a like a love movement, you know what I'm saying? And I made a lot of connections, personal and ideologically, mm -hmm. that were just so valuable to me. Is anybody listening? Yeah. Double fisting, probably like I'm drifting. Yeah. Try standing on a couch, bitch, I'm reaching. Yeah. Half giving, half saying, that's a split screen. Glad to be insane. You know, I, I didn't really realize the extent of the uh, parallel between the Native American experience and the black experience mm -hmm. before Stand Around. I just saw how hand in hand we are, black people and native people, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like rape statistics in the Native American community, which are fucking, yeah, they make you take a deep breath like that. And if you look at what happens in their community with rape, and then you look at what happens in the African American community with violence, mm -hmm. it's very parallel. It's like you have this generational uh, trauma that lives inside of your actual cells and your DNA, where your people have been subjected to these specific forms of abuse for so long that at a certain point, you don't even need the oppressor anymore because you've got their DNA and their ideology inside of you. So it's like, we just keep that fucking cycle perpetuating. We've been brutalized for so long. We're like, fuck it. This is what we know now, violence. We do it to each other now. And the same is to say for rape in the Native American community. I think a lot of people don't understand that. See, they, I'm not sure, a lot of people don't understand it. Others do understand it and they just like to turn a blind eye and pretend that all of the responsibility is on the oppressed people because that's a good way to keep the ball rolling. Right. You know what I mean? Like Sean Hannity and the rest of Fox News are completely aware that these oppressed people have been brutalized in these ways for this long. Mm -hmm. You know, but they just like to say, that was a long time ago. I didn't do it. Yeah. What's what's up with these criminal blacks? You know? When it's like they're they're not that dumb. Like, That's just how you keep white supremacy going is you revise history. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I feel like they definitely are very aware. They know I think what's going on. Regu like regular people, I feel like are more ignorant to regular it. Regular people do not know what's going understanding on. Understanding the cycle of trauma, no, they don't. like you're they saying. They just wonder why it is that black people, you know, are so violent. And I can't even, I can't even walk around being upset with people for being ignorant. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? For not knowing. Um, any better than what they've been taught by generations of their families. That's how, that's the crux on which white supremacy lies is this American white exceptionalism that points a finger and says everybody else is a problem because of this. That's the only way that you could convince poor white people that they should be upset with poor black people instead of being upset with rich white people. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's the only way you can do that. That's why I fuck with a nigga like Bernie because although Bernie does address race, he leans heavily on addressing class, mm -hmm. which to me, I mean, that's, that's the way that we actually shake shit up and we move forward. Obviously, we gotta be real about race, but at the point in time when we can make poor white people realize that corporations don't have their best interest in mind and billionaires don't have their best interest in mind and those same people 
are victimizing them, then they could come up and they can realize that everybody brown is not their enemy. I feel like the people who are at the top at the end of the day are trying to polarize us that way so that we don't... Separation. Exactly. Separation is key. That's that divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what makes people really dangerous to the power structure is unity. So if you look at when they killed Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King had a bug in his ear to do a poor people's march on yeah. Washington. When you look at the killing of Fred Hampton, Black Panther in Chicago, Fred Hampton had a rainbow coalition where he was uniting Puerto Ricans with the poor Irish whites with the black nationalist mm -hmm. assassination. You know what I mean? Even, even Malcolm X, although he was assassinated by the nation, Malcolm X had a new lease on life. He was like, you know what? All this, all white people are the devil and I can't work with any other races. It, this is not the way to move forward. And, and the point in time at which you start to put the pieces together and unite poor people and just unite people from across the spectrum, that's when you become a real fucking threat. Mm -hmm. I think that's why so many establishment people are against Bernie, because I think he can oh, do that. Sure. Joe Biden, man. Joe Biden really fed this whole, fed this whole beast. And not only did he feed the beast, he was instrumental in building the beast. Mm -hmm. In the late 80s and the early 90s, Joe Biden was one of the politicians that was writing legislation to construct this robust criminal justice system we have now. That's probably the law right there. <laughs> Coming to get me. <laughs> Did you just say something bad about Joe Biden? <laughs> right. That's it. We're done. Joe Biden went as far as to criticize George Bush Sr. in a tough on crime uh, criminal justice bill that he passed because Joe Biden said it wasn't tough enough, that it didn't incarcerate enough people for long enough, that it didn't put enough police in the streets and it didn't put enough prosecutors in the courts. Coming from communities that are have been ravaged by that. I don't know why that's not talked about more. Why is there not somebody saying in a debate like, hey, but you did this, like, you know? I feel like they be sh calling them out every once in a while, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling it though. These are the reasons why I support Bernie because his receipts mm -hmm. say it all for me. You know what I mean? His receipts, photographs of him in the 60s being dragged for sitting in with black protesters. The chain to black women. Chain to black women. The, the receipts, they, they tell me a lot. Joe Biden and them, Elizabeth Warren, the rest of them, the receipts, they don't add up. They don't add up. That's the thing. I feel like somebody doesn't come along, especially a politician, doesn't come along very often who you can look at their record for how many years. And they've been talking about the same shit. It's, it's the chance. Like, if we're gonna rebuild it from the inside like we were talking about, this is the opportunity because who else is gonna lead us to do that, you know? Nobody. Definitely not any of these guys. I'm, I'm on that free healthcare for all wave, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember being in, uh, being in London some years ago and, uh, I happened to get sick on tour, and I had to go to the hospital, man. I went and, you know, was at the emergency room and got checked out by these doctors, and then they prescribed me some medicine, and I walked out. They didn't even ask me for my ID yeah. or insurance or anything. 
And I was like, what the fuck? I felt like I was stealing. You know what I mean? I felt like I was stealing the medical care. I was like, I'm going to just look straight and keep walking. You know what I mean? And hope nobody says shit to me. They didn't say shit to me. I had an x-ray and everything. You know, that shit could have, like, it cost me $10,000 dude. in America easily. It just doesn't need to be that way. So many families just completely tanked mm -hmm. because someone gets sick. And I think that's just wholly inhumane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm from Canada. So you guys got it popping over there, we, right? It's, it's amazing. And when I moved here, I was so anxious, still anxious, all the time. And just sad because I couldn't believe that I had to go to the doctor or anybody had to go to the doctor and pay like astronomical amount, like profiting off of people. Profit, profiting off of people's oh, bad pain, luck or misfortune. It it's honestly disgusting. Straight pain, pimping. Pimping the pain, that's what they do. Real talk. And it's really the insurance companies cleaning yeah. up. If you could say something to like kids or just people, honestly, who are just kind of like. Get money, fuck bitches. That's <laughs> I would tell the youth of America and elsewhere. Shades up. Educate yourself, man. Don't let these people send you off. Because that's what, that's what this whole game is. This is a big send-off game. And if you're old enough to vote 2020, don't play yourself. You know what I mean? Don't play the rest of us. It's like you, you got to take power in the autonomy and the opportunity that you do have to, to be a part, to be heard, to make your perspective matter, to make your voice heard. And give money, fuck bitches too, though, you know? <laughs> Do you think people should vote in the Democratic primary? Yeah, hell yeah. Vote for Bernie, shit.